That was the surprise, the disappointment of the day, of course, the uh, elimination of Nicky Gooch and Matt Jasper. Just before we leave short track, let's hear from both of them. They're talking with Paul Dickinson. Guys, I don't, I don't think words can accurately describe what you must both be feeling right now. No, probably not. Um, yeah, it's not gone uh, quite to plan uh, these last couple of days, so, uh, yeah, there's not really a lot to say about it. Matt? Tough day. Uh, I was actually very pleased with Tuesday. Uh, the 500 team, I was quite happy with the draw, you know, it's going to be tough. Got off to a, a terrible start and then caught them back up and didn't, didn't sort of build on it. Uh, the relay was obviously disappointing. We, we ran into the back of the Japanese, partly my fault, uh, pushing Nicky straight into him. Uh, he shouldn't have been there. Just not how, very good. How did you both feel after the 500 meter heats? Because obviously, a, the energy that it sat from you must have been pretty difficult, but B, there was a mental aspect to it as well, having both been knocked out. I, you know, I, like I said, I, I was disappointed because I got off to a bad start. I stuck my toe in uh, just after the, just before the apex, uh, before the first block, which, and then I caught them back up, and I'm like, oh, DQ. Oh, I swear I never did anything, but oh, dude, I did something <laughs> wrong. But yeah I, yeah, I had to try and get into the relay as fresh as possible. We didn't have a great deal of time, and it just didn't quite go to plan. I mean, Nicky, I guess uh, you must also feel disappointed for Matthew Rowe and Rob Mitchell and David Allardyce as well, who were sitting on the bench this time. Yeah, um, I, mean, I mean, it's just, I mean, for me, it's been a, pretty much a nightmare game from when we arrived, going downhill, interrupting the preparation. I wasn't right for a thousand metres. I felt a little bit better today. Um, and I was, you know, I was confident I could go through, but I took a fall. That, that made us, you know, a little bit of difference. I was a little bit unsettled uh, in the relay, and I was getting uh, knocked around a lot. I mean, being at the back of the relay wasn't the ideal place to be, but because you would keep getting the knocks and the ice was um, breaking up a lot, it was very hard to make moves up to get to the front to get out of trouble. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a shame that the, guy, the guys didn't get a chance in the relay to race the final. You know, it's a shame for everyone. It's just been, a, it's just been probably the worst Olympics I've been to. For, so... Uh, yeah, it's, it's one of those things. You know. What about everybody back home? I mean, Matt, your mum's going to be a nervous wreck, isn't she? She'll be all right now we're out. <laughs> Hi, mum. <laughs> She'll be fine now. She'll, I don't know what she's doing right now. She's probably on the, the vodka and tonic or something. Calm herself. I don't know what my dad's going to be like. It's actually tough for the people back home. They've been kind of supporting us. We've got a great deal of support. I mean, it's been great. You know, we had fax after fax and call after call. And, you know, it's great to come out here. You saw all the boys sat there. The other day, the sport's been great. I think it, it helped us through some tough times. It didn't turn out quite as how we wanted it to, but it certainly helps. Now, you've obviously got to contest the B final uh, on Saturday, the last uh, day of the short track speed skating program. But just looking longer term, Nicky, where do you see yourself in four years' time? Four years' time? Um, probably not doing short track, but uh, I, I don't know. Um, I still enjoy the sport. You know, I, I love, I love uh, you know, the life I lead. Training, traveling abroad, stuff like that. I mean, it's a great life. Um, whether I'll, whether I think I can still be competitive in four years' time is another matter. Because I think uh, the sport's a very young sport, and a lot of the top guys are very young. I mean, I'm not uh, that old, but uh, I think well, you're I'm, only 26. We're going to say I'm, tw I'm 25. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, most of those guys out there are younger than that. Yeah. Um, I want to, I want to go on and try some other things. I, I like. I'll stay in sport, you know, but I might try, try something else. And what about the old man of the team here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, me. Um, I think I'll be national coach in four years' time. <laughs> I don't know what Alan's going to make of that. You never know. Uh, I'll probably be in the Olympic in Drake, actually, having a couple of pints when the next games are on. It'd be nice to carry on, but uh, I'll be 29. I'm feeling how old I am already today. So. Well, they do say the Olympics is the toughest show on earth, so... Uh, you know, our commiserations, but thanks for coming to talk to us. No problem. Thanks a lot. It's been a pleasure. It's good of them to speak, and Matt Jasper, a real character. We uh, think they were jokes, anyway. Janet Daly, representing Australia, comes from Brisbane, which I dare say is a lot warmer than it is in Nagano at the moment. Goes in this first heat of the women's 1,000 metres. Nine laps, nine circuits, each measuring just over 110 meters. And Toshigawara of Japan it is who goes into first place, followed by Kanklini of Italy, then Erin Gleason of the United States. Just two skaters to qualify for the quarterfinals.
coming round with seven laps to go. Tishigawara leads. A very steady pace at the moment. Ken Cleaney in second, Erin Gleason in third, and Janet Daly just uh, off the back of the pack at the moment, tracking every move the other three skaters make. Well, I thought Tish Tishigawara there was just going to pick up the pace a little, but uh, slowing it down again. They're lapping at around about 11 seconds. Now they're beginning to motor a bit more. Ken Cleaney goes in the lead. Oh! And Janet Daly is gone. Oh, my goodness, that's disappointing. Kenklini leads to Shigawara. Three laps to go. Erin Gleason of the USA. Three metres adrift at the moment. It looks as though the Italian and the Japanese skater are looking good for the quarterfinal. Janet Daly, incidentally, up on her feet and skating. She's not hurt. They'll hear the bell this time. Marinella Kenklina. Tishigawara gets a huge roar from the crowd. Kanklini will qualify quite easily. Tishigawara comes and takes it on the line. And Erin Gleason, a distant third, as Tishigawara gives the thumbs up. She's through to the quarterfinal easily. Well, it didn't appear as though there was any contact there. Indeed, there wasn't. It was Janet Daly who just lost the edge of the blade on the ice. Two now, and Yang Yang of China right on the inside, just hanging back and uh, coming into contact already with Azawa of Japan. Vlaeva of Bulgaria, number four, who goes into the lead. Just behind her, Erin Porter, wearing 48 on her helmet, from the United States of America. Erin Porter is absolutely tiny in comparison to Daniela Vlaeva of Bulgaria. And as expected, the pace is very slow, but uh, an Olympic record having been set in the last heat after a slow early pace by Ikura Tishigawara of Japan. Prompts her teammate, Saki Ozawa, to go into the lead with Erin Porter now in second place. Five laps to go in heat two of the women's thousand meters. Ozawa inspired by the exploits of Tishigawara in the previous heat as Erin Bordig tries to go through on the inside. She'll have to be a little careful of that. That's the sort of maneuver that got Nikki Gooch disqualified in 1994 in Lillehammer. Coming tight on the curve. So Erin Porter leads. Two laps to go from Yang Yang. The Chinese skater moves through the same manoeuvre as Erin Porter put over her on the last lap. Now they take the bell, just two to qualify. The Japanese skater coming through in front of Erin Porter. It was a clean manoeuvre and Porter's gone. Oh. Yang Yang first, Azawa second. Erin Porter may, but just may, have uh, a little bit of a word with the referee about that last bend. But at the moment, it's China and Japan who go through to the quarterfinal. Well, it was the diminutive Ozawa who just nipped in front of Erin Porter. Then coming round the final bend, I think perhaps Erin Porter just trying to do too much. Just three skaters take the line in the third heat of the women's 1,000 meters and uh, straight into the lead. Katia Colturi from Italy being followed by the skater who was disqualified in the final of the 500 meters, the world record holder, Isabel Charest of Canada. And then Shikaji Tanaka of Japan. Well, already the Olympic record has been broken twice here after very slow starts. And just as her predecessors, her teammates did before her, Azawa and Tishigawara. Tanaka goes into the lead to try and pick up the pace a little bit. Just under six laps to go in the third heat. Isabel Charest there looking tremendous in the 500 meters until, what, the last couple of laps of the final. When she got involved in a tussle and was disqualified, she certainly looked set for a medal. When she wants to turn on the power, she can put meters between herself and the rest. 
Three and a half laps to go in heat three. Sheree leads for Canada. Japan in second place with Tanaka. Katja Kolturi of Italy, a couple of meters behind the Japanese skater. She really is a powerful skater, Isabel Sheree. Sixth in this event four years ago. She's won Olympic medals since 1992, since the introduction of this sport into the Olympic Winter Games. On the final lap, the Italian is coming back. Isabel Sheree and Tanaka off the band. The Italian trying to get through, but the Canadian wins it. Tanaka in second place. And Katia Colturi of Italy is eliminated. The slowest time so far, 139.73. Kim Yun Mai right on the outside in heat four of the women's thousand meters. And immediately into the lead goes the Olympic champion of 1998, Annie Perot of Canada. She's being followed by Marina Pilaeva of Russia and uh, the Italian, Mara Urbani, coming through into the lead, wearing the all blue suit. Canada in second place, Russia in third. And the Korean, who, like her teammates, has prepared so well for these Olympic Winter Games. Wearing number 21, going around the outside, the Italian coming through on the inside, number 25 on her helmet. Six laps to go in heat four of the women's thousand meters. Kim of Korea leads. Annie Perot, the Olympic, the new Olympic champion over 500 meters in second. Oh, this is a real tussle in heat four. All of these skaters in contention, and it's speeding up now. Korea lead, Canada second, Italy third, Russia four. Three laps to go this time. Kim of Korea being closely shadowed by Annie Perot of Canada. The Canadians have come here well prepared too. Italy, Urbani in third place. And the Russian, Marina Pilaeva, in a difficult position right at the back of the field. They'll hear the bell this time. Just two to go through to the quarterfinals. Kim from Annie Perot. The first two. I don't know how the Italian's going to get through. Maybe try on the inside. No, she doesn't. Kim, quite easily then, eases down into first place. Annie Perot of Canada in second. 139.04 for the time. Annie Perot surprised a lot of people winning the 500 meters a couple of nights ago, but obviously in good form, along with her teammate, Isabel Charest, the world record holder for the 500, who went through in the previous heat. But Kim, the Korean, in great shape in heat four. Heat five and on the outside, Wang Chun Lu of China, who didn't finish in the 500 meters two nights ago. So uh, that was the final, she didn't get a medal. And so it was awarded to, to the winner of the B final. So a very interesting uh, situation ensuing there. But anyway, in heat five in the lead, Anka Yanni Landman of the Netherlands. The orange top there, very distinctive of the Netherlands skaters, wearing number 33. In second place, the Chinese skater Wang, in better shape than she was in the final of the 500 meters the other evening. In third place from the People's Republic of Korea, Han Ryon Hyu. And right at uh, the back there, from the United States, Amy Peterson, one of the most experienced skaters in this Olympic tournament. She finished third in this event at the American back in 1992 and has had two relay medals. Three and a half laps to go. Landman from the Netherlands leads. The Chinese skater Wang in second place, coming through to take the lead. No, she doesn't. She gets pushed back into second. The American Amy Peterson in third, and she's gone. Landman from the Netherlands has gone right on the crown of the bend. So the race is on now for the two qualifiers, and it's Amy Peterson of the USA who takes advantage. They take the bell now, and look at the difference. There's meters between Amy Peterson and Wang of China in second place. Han will be skated out of it. 133.53, it's pretty fast, but a bit of drama there in heat five. 
and Amy Peterson just bided her time and timed it perfectly in the end. Amy Peterson, well, we were saying that she is a very experienced skater. She knew exactly what she was doing. And uh, when anchor Yanni Landman went off the crown of the bend, just being cut up a little bit there by Wang, she was taken out. I wonder if there'll be an objection by the Netherlands team management. Wang it is. She had misfortune in the final of the 500. This time, it's Landman's turn. Well, I think the thumbs up sign there from Wilfo Riley means that Landman will probably be reinstated into the quarterfinals. There could be a disqualification and it could be Wang. He's on the left hand side of the picture there, sitting next to Amy Peterson, who won that heat. And it's just come up that Landman, in fact, has been reinstated because of that clash with Wang. Wang is disqualified, so three qualifiers for the quarterfinal okay, from that for race. Peterson of the, the USA, Han, race. who might count herself a little bit lucky, and Landman of the Netherlands. Heat six now on the inside, Ellen Hendrika Vegas of the Netherlands, who goes straight into the lead. I'm quite relieved to see her training partner and friend, Landman, be reinstated into the quarterfinals after clashing with Wang of China in the last heat. So at the moment, number 35, Vegas leads. In second place is the Russian, Tikhanina. And in third place, just easing in behind the Russian, the German skater, Suzanne Bush, and right at the back, another Yang Yang. We've got two in these championships, and we've come to know them as Yang Yang A, who is skating here, and Yang Yang S, who went in heat two and broke the Olympic record. Five and a half laps to go. German lead with Suzanne Bush. Netherlands in second place, Vegas. In third place, Yang Yang from China, and then Tikhanina from Russia. The pace picking up all the time now. Four laps to go. The Netherlands leads. China in second. Germany third. Russia fourth. And what fantastic success the Netherlands have had in long track speed skating. They've yet to achieve that level of success in short track, but they're working hard at it. Two laps to go. Just two qualifiers. And at the moment, it looks as though Ellen Hendrika Vegas and Yang Yang of China have done enough to go through with ease. They take the bell. I don't think there's anything Suzanne Bush and Tikhanina of Russia can do about the lead that Yang Yang's got now. Vegas in second place looks safe as well. China qualify along with the Netherlands in heat six. The defending champion, Chun Li Kyung of Korea, goes in heat seven and has decided already just to drop right back into fourth place, wearing number 28. And at the moment, Jong Ok Myong from the People's Republic of Korea. Tanya Vicent of Canada in second place, just easing into the lead, number 10. In third place at the moment, Evgenia Radanova of Bulgaria. It looks very, very gentle, doesn't it, as they glide across the ice, but as soon as they turn up the afterburners and go into top gear. Well, the speed is absolutely marvellous to watch. But that is when accidents can occur as well. And here goes the defending champion. Very disappointed, just getting a bronze medal in the 500 metres. Was Chun Li Kyung in the lead? But that bronze medal came from a B final because there were only two finishers in the A final and look at that Penny Vicent goes way way off the back there she didn't skate that bottom bend very well at all and a chance for Radanova of Bulgaria who's now being chased by the defending champion Chan of Korea two and a half laps to go in heat seven a surprise leader Radanova the Canadian is trying to come back to the rest but I fear she's got too much to do now just one and a half laps to go. The defending champion eases past Radanova of Bulgaria as they hit the bell. Two qualifiers very comfortably indeed. Chun just dragging Radanova around with her. Good skate by the Bulgarian. And Tanya Vicent very disappointed with her third place. And in fourth place is Jong. 
Well, 10% of Canada was pushed way out wide there, and that's what upset her rhythm, upset her balance, and she couldn't get back into the race. Number 39, of no Jun of the People's Republic of Korea, has been disqualified. Well, an unusual decision, not one I it's pretend to understand. Like John has, in fact, like been disqualified. But Tani of Ascent has not been reinstated into the quarterfinal. The final heat of the women's 1,000 meters, one of Korea, Kunza of Germany, Svechkova of the Ukraine, and Ho of the People's Republic of Korea. And she is in second place at the moment, wearing number 37 on her helmet. The German in the lead, Yvonne Kunza wearing 19. And 43, Svechkova, and the Korean wearing number 31, Hai Kyung. One of a brilliant trio of Korean skaters in this women's 1,000 just cruising around at the back. Oh, even at that speed, the German Kunze almost uh, having a little collision there with Svechkova, and Ho goes through into the lead for the first time. Coming around with six laps to go, but here goes the Korean Won. She's having none of this early slow pace. She wants to just speed it up a wee bit. Much, much less than even a training run, this. So number 31 is in the lead. Ho from the People's Republic of Korea in second. Spetskova of the Ukraine in third. The German Kunze just going a little bit wide there in fourth place. Three and a half laps to go, just over 300 meters. Korea from the People's Republic of Korea, from the Ukraine, from Germany. Now it's going to get interesting. There's just two to qualify. Kunze trying to come through on the inside. She pushes the Ukrainian out wide. And that has meant that Ho and Wan have got away. There's a five-meter gap now between those two and Kunze of Germany. I think the leader, Wan, can afford to ease down just a little bit. Wan and Ho are going to comfortably qualify easily in this final heat. There we go. It's 1.44, the slowest heat we've had from the eight heats in this first round of the women's 1,000 meters. Wan of Korea joins her teammates in the quarterfinals along with Ho from the People's Republic. Well, there was only a couple of meters between all four skaters before Kunza tried to come through on the inside on Svechkova of the Ukraine, and that was what made the big difference. That allowed Wan and Ho to get away and qualify easily in this last heat. That's a list of all the qualifiers for the quarterfinal, led by Amy Peterson of the United States. All three Koreans have made it safely through. Two Canadians as well. Isabel Charest, the world record holder for the 500 meters, who was disqualified in the final of that distance. And there we have the other two Japanese qualifiers. So no surprises there, the main contenders going through, Jamie, and the Olympic record going so many times, I suppose that's not a surprise either. Yeah, they, they are, they've really uh, improved on the 1,000 metres, the ladies. They're, uh, they're skating rather well. They've, I think they broke it six times mm -hmm. in, the, in the opening rounds, which uh, whether that will be a good thing for some of the qualifiers to go on to in, in, into later rounds um, will remain to be seen, really. In the ladies' event that was completed on Thursday, um, Annie Perot won the, the gold, yeah. but her teammate, Isabel Charest, was unlucky in that final. A chance for sort of revenge here? Yeah, uh, Isabel was very unlucky, I thought. Um, a bad tactical move in the final, uh, very uncharacteristic of her, uh, and hopefully she'll be able to put, put this right uh, in the 1,000 metres. She looked very very comfortable in a qualifying round, a very slow mm -hmm. time uh, in comparison to the other rounds. So hopefully she'll be feeling fresh and ready for the, the next rounds. Well, still a way to go. Uh, we'll have the quarterfinals of the 1000 uh, a little later. The next event, though, is the men's sprint, the 500 metres. Sadly, no British representative because, because both Nikki Gooch and Matt Jasper um, didn't get through in the heats on Thursday. And uh, tremendous disappointment because they went there with such expectation of a medal. Yeah, um, I think we've dwelled on Nikki's preparation um, on the past and um, 
the, the first two weeks he was ill prior to the game starting, so that, that put pay really to his chances. Um, Matt in his race, uh, he got off to a bad start and he did uh, get beat by two good skaters, Lee Ya Young from China, who, who uh, got the silver in the 1,000 metre event, and Maurizio Carney you know, of Italy, he was a very, very top sprinter, so a bit, bit, uh, bit unlucky, really. A bit unlucky, very disappointing that no British representative, but the quarter-finals took place today. We'll join the first of those now. Away we go, a real sprint for the first corner, and the Korean fell. Well, it's at the referee's discretion as to whether to call them back if one skater does fall before the first corner. It was obviously nothing any of the other skaters did. It's Uematsu of Japan who leads. What a pace to start this first quarter final. Fabio Carter moves into second, Mark Gagnon in third, very close to Carter, who's pushed out wide. Uematsu is getting in the way as well. Mark Gagnon almost barges his way through there. They'll hear the bell this time. There's nothing the Korean can do about it. Lee is about 10 meters back. Gagnon leads. Uematsu in second place. Carter in third. Carter trying to come through on the Japanese. He can't do it. 43-25. What a cracking start. The first quarter final of the 500 meters. And just after the gun went, well... It was uh, Lee Jun Wan of Korea who faltered. That left three skaters. And ultimately, they were all led over the line by Mark Gagnon and Itoshi Uematsu of Japan. Just two skaters to go through to the semi final. The Japanese skater there giving a little bow to the crowd. Watch the Korean on the outside. That was why the referee didn't call them back. It was the Korean's own fault. He slipped on the ice. It really is like the sprint start of an athletics 100-meter uh, race. In first place, number 109, Mark Gatton of Canada. And in second place, number 150. Well, the Canadians have got a great track record in short track speed skating. 43.25 the time, outside of the Olympic record by just three tenths of a second. The second qualifier, Hitoshi Uematsu. Japanese have never won a gold medal in short track speed skating at the Olympic Games. Mark Gagnon confirmed with Uematsu as the two qualifiers, Carter and Lee, are eliminated. Well, certainly over the last couple of days of the short track speed skating program, we've seen a lot of fallers. And in these 500 meter races, as we see the lineup for the second quarter final, with the sprints so fast and furious, I wouldn't be at all surprised to see one or two skaters go down on the ice. That's at the start line there, and uh, those were some of the grooves made in the ice by Lee Jun Wan in the last heat as he fell. Well, this time it's Chai of Korea, Andrew Gable of the United States there, wearing number 147, and Yulong of China, right on the inside, and Francois Drolet of Canada. Chai of Korea, silver medalist in 94, and Andrew Gable, who finished fourth in Ready. the final of the 1,000 meters on the outside. Oh, and again a Canadian, just trying to get an advantage at the start, but uh, there's only Time about, well, it's less than 20 meters from the start line to the start of the first bend. That's why you need a good position. Away we go this time, I've been called back once more. Francois Drole there, hands on hips, just behind the Chinese skater, An Yu Long. Then the Korean Chai. Line position three, four star. So that uh, was Chai of Korea, who uh, was told by Franco Ridi, the starter. They get away this time, Andrew Gable, big fella driving with those arms to get to that bend first. He does it well. And you long in second place. Drole in third, the Korean off the back. Chai. Now things will start to get interesting. Coming up towards two laps to go, and the Canadian trying to go through on the inside, which he does well. There was a good gap there, but the Chinese uh, skater could come back at him. 
They'll hear the bell this time. Just two to go through to the semi-final. Drolet and Gable pushing on that corner. And Gable's been pushed out of it. It's Chai who's in third place at the moment. Anu Long of China is going to come through. And Drolet together of Canada. And Gable of the United States will be kicking himself. He looked in a good position, but eventually just had to go wide, and that was too much for the American. Francois Drolet, again, hands on hips, just uh, looking at the replay. Did he come into contact with Gable? Well, there may be an objection about that. Ken Pendry. One of the leading figures in refereeing and international skating from Great Britain will be looking at that very carefully indeed. At Anu Long of China. The time 43.37. And I think we do have a disqualification. We'll try and update that in just a moment. Francois Drolet, Canadian, and the Canadian team managers. And it looks as though Andrew Gable of the USA has been reinstated. This often happens in short track speed skating. Two automatic qualifiers. And uh, normally we just get four skaters in one race, of course. So in the semi-finals, we're certainly going to have at least five skaters in one semi-final. And Francois Drolet of Canada has been disqualified. The guy with the cap on. There's no need for me to tell you what he thinks about that decision. China and Korea go through automatically. And Andrew Gable of the USA is reinstated into the semi-final. That's the lineup for the third quarter-final. And uh, Francois Drelle's teammate, Eric Bedard of Canada, bronze medalist in the 1,000 meters, he goes third from the inside. Lai of China is there. Nishitani of Japan and Carnino of Italy as the Italian. Now, I wonder if we're going to have a mad dash to the first bend like we had in the last quarterfinal. They really do explode away from the line. Live China on the inside. Nishitani of Japan. Bedard of Canada. Carnino of Italy. Oh, <laughs> well, the Italian and perhaps Eric Bedard of Canada jumping the gun just a little bit. It's not so bad in the longer races, the 1,000 meters, which is the longest distance the individuals skate in the Olympic Games. They do skate anything up to 3,000 meters in other tournaments. Not so bad for those longer distances. Things are taking a little bit more uh, gently, but in the 500 meters, You've got to get into a good position from the gun. So the Olympic record that was set by Tarao of Japan, he goes in the last quarterfinal. 42.94 and uh, the Canadian, Eric Bedard, being told by the starter in no uncertain terms that it was him the last time. Away we go. Lie of China. Then Nishitani. Then the Canadian Bedard. Then Canino of Italy. They're not hanging about, are they? The angle on the ankle and the pressure on the ankle round those bends is absolutely incredible. Lie of China leads, coming up with two laps to go. Nishitani there, just touching. The Chinese skater on the back, just to ease him out of the way a little bit. Eric Bedard, who won that bronze medal in the 1,000. He's got a bit of work to do if he's going to go through to the semi-final. He's coming through on the inside of the Japanese skater. Look at this finish. China, Japan through comfortably. And in the end, the bronze medalist could not do it. Eric Bedard eliminated, as was Carnino of Italy. Lie of China looked comfortable. Nishitani there. He'll be smiling in a moment. There he goes. But uh, really, the Japanese skater 
almost came to grief with a little push as Eric Bedard of Canada tried to ease him out of the way and tried to go through on him. Cutting from the outside to the inside was the man in third place. Look at that. And all credit to Nishitani, stayed on his feet. And it's he, him, who goes through to the semi-final. And Lai of China setting a new Olympic record of 42.86 seconds. Tarao's record has gone. He goes in the last quarter-final. Forty-two point nine eight. That's just outside the old Olympic record. The world record is forty-two point six four. That stood for a couple of years. But uh, the way things are going, I wouldn't be at all surprised if we uh, if we saw something approaching a new Olympic record in the later round. So Lai of China, Nishitani of Japan, qualify Eric Bidard, and the Italian Carlino are eliminated. The last quarter-final, Kai Feng of China, Satoru Tarao. Now the former Olympic record holder, Dave Vashti, who uh, has an unofficial world record time pending. Set that uh, just a few weeks before the Olympic flame was lit here in Nagano. Coached by Wolf O'Reilly. And Kim Dong-sung of Korea is in this final heat. The Olympic champion over 1,000 meters. That's Dave Vashti. The Korean on the outside. I wonder if he'll drop to the back after the gun goes like so many of the other Korean skaters have done before him. And the women too, just to stay out of trouble for the first Go to the start. half a lap or so. An intriguing lineup for this last quarter final. Ready. Kai Feng of China on the inside. Here we go, and indeed, the Korean just dropping back. He's only 17 years old, but he won the 1,000 meters superbly. After becoming world champion last year, he's a couple of meters away from Dave Versteeg in third place. Kai Feng of China leads. Tarao of Japan goes into the lead. Oh, but he's gone! The Japanese just slipped, I think. We'll have to wait for the slow-motion replay to see whether there was any contact. So Dave Versteeg now of the Netherlands gets away. Kim Dong Sang of Korea in second place, just from uh, Kai Feng of China. David Stieg is going to qualify for the semi finals comfortably. And Kim Dong Sang will as well. The new Olympic champion for the 1,000 meters. Kai Feng of China is run out of it. And Satoru Terao. It's all gone wrong for him. He's just skating over the line now. David Stieg, his time 43.37. So a 4.5 of a second away from the Olympic record that was set in the last heat. And consolation cheers for the Japanese skater just crossing the line. Well, that's the young fella that everybody here is going to have to beat. Surely he must be the favorite to take this 500 meters, despite the fact he looked as though he was well beaten there by Dave Vestig of the Netherlands, who just there is in third place but was there any contact i really don't know but you could see the look of anguish on Tarao's face in first place dave versteg of the netherlands in second place don san kim well certainly the scoreboard is showing that dave versteg of the netherlands qualifies along with kim of korea and no sign of any disqualifications no sign of any objections by the japanese bench the team management so it looks as though one of the favorites here in Nagano has been eliminated and will not take part in the semi-final David Stieg world record holder Kim the Olympic champion at thousand meters they go through to the semi-final it's going to be an intriguing lineup in those two semi-finals later on well Jamie Fern I think from the start of those uh, quarterfinals there in the 500 meters you could tell how intense the eventual battle for the medals is going to be it's going to be fairly frantic isn't it yeah they're all skating very very fast times um, there's not a lot between any of the skaters at the moment they're all putting in some good times and the Olympic record was broken again well it was an incredible to see that Olympic record go after what th I think three false starts in that sir yeah very nerve-wracking um, I think uh, Li Yayong from China is going to be one of the favorites he's he got his silver medal in the thousand meters and if the 500 is one of his better events, 
so he's looking looking good for a, a, a spot at the title. The Koreans, though, very uh, very impressive as usual. Yeah, the Koreans. The good thing about the Koreans is they're just so relaxed and so confident. They can be in fourth place at, at, off the off the line basically, and they can cross the cross the line in the qualifying position. Okay, Jamie, thanks very much. We'll see the semi-finals of the men's 500 metres coming up a little later on. But first of all, back to the white ring for the quarterfinals of the ladies' 1,000 metres. We saw the Olympic record go six times in the heats. We're off to the quarterfinals now. I wonder what we can expect there. Paul Dickinson is the commentator once again. The first quarterfinal of the women's 1,000 metres. China, Korea, the People's Republic of Korea, Canada and Holland. And there are five skaters on the nine laps of this 1,000 metres because Anka Yani Landman, who's currently just moving into the lead ahead of the uh, People's Republic of Korea's Han. Landman it was, who was pushed and fell in one of the first round races. So uh, five skaters in here and four in all the rest. Landman leads, coached by Britain's Wilf O'Reilly. He really started off our knowledge and brought it to our attention, the sport of short track speed skating back in 1988 when he won those two demonstration gold medals in Calgary. And since then, of course, British speed skating, although not represented in the final stages of the Olympic competition here because of the elimination of uh, Nicky Gooch and Matt Jasper, the sport really has gone from strength to strength in Great Britain, but could certainly do with more talent. Now then, with three laps to go in this first quarter-final, the Chinese skater Yang Yang moves into a big lead over Landman. In third place and moving through into second is Kim Yun Mai of Korea. And just two skaters will go through to the semi-finals. The pace has really picked up as the front two hit the bell. From China, Yang Yang. From Korea, Kim Yun Mai. Landman is not going to make it through. And China wins it. Korea in second, Netherlands third. The time 131.99. And I'm sure that will be confirmed. Well, I'm just looking at the clock at the moment. That is under world record time. Well, the early pace did not seem to suggest that a world record was on the cards. We'll update that in just a few moments' time. But look at this. Landman it was who led, but then the charge came on the outside by Yang Yang. And it is a new world record, a brilliant skate there by Yang Yang of China. 131.91 and in fact Kim from Korea as well bettered the old record. world record with 132.097 such is the dominance of these two nations in women's short track at the moment and look at that Landman broke the Olympic record and is eliminated unbelievable nine laps it's safe to say it's not going to be another world record. Ikue Tishigawara, diminutive in stature, but lots of good technique, guts and determination. Marinella Canclini of Italy. The Italians have got a good tradition in this sport as well. And in third place, Chun Li Kyung of Korea. The defending champion in this distance. She hasn't really shone so brightly as she did four years ago so far, but the Koreans have certainly got their preparation right here in Nagano. The Sugawara leads, five and a half laps to go. Suddenly, Kyung was just shoved back there into third place. Marinella, Marinella Kenclini was having none of it. It's been the same four from the gun. Radanova of Bulgaria right at the back. Four laps to go. At the moment, Chun Li Kung of Korea, she's got a bronze medal already in the 500 meters, but as defending champion, she's got to start making a move. Radanova, the Bulgarian, trying to go around on the outside. Two and a half laps to go. Tishigawara leads. Oh, the Italian goes wide. That lets the Korean through. The Korean just sailed through the gap made by Kanklini. 
It's still to Shigawara of Japan. The Bulgarian trying to go through, but she's blocked by the Japanese. Now Chun Lee Kyung of Korea makes a move. There's a couple of meters between her and Toshigawara. Can the Japanese skater hang on? Yes, she can. Oh, a big sigh from the crowd here. They weren't really cheering for the defending champion, who in the end won it comfortably. They were breathing a huge sigh of relief for Ikoi Toshigawara, who did get through to the semi-final. sends the skaters away on the first of nine laps. The People's Republic of Korea, Ho Jong Hai, just easing into the lead. But Isabel Charest is so strong. She's won medals at every level of the sport. Going wide, Japanese skater Azawa, having just seen Toshigawara qualify for the semi-final, will, will certainly want to join her teammate. Isabel Charest just eases in on the shoulder of Azawa. Going wide just to make sure she's not impeded by anybody else, but at the same time, perhaps slowing down Yang Yang of China. Japan in third. The People's Republic of Korea was fourth, but they pushed the Japanese skater. Ozawa out wide. Japan comes back, but it's still Isabel Charest of Canada leading. They're coming round now with four laps to go. It's Canada, China, the People's Republic of Korea, and Japan. Saki Ozawa of Japan has got a lot to do now. Just about 300 meters to go. Isabel Charest will not want to make the same mistake as she made in the final of the 500 meters. She'd preferably like to have an easy ride through the semi-finals here. It's Charest just puffing a little bit. I don't think uh, Japan are going to have two through to the semi-final. The final lap, they take the bell. Azawa is trying to make a big effort, but at the moment, Isabel Charest just easing down. Yang Yang of China will go through, and Azawa from Japan ends up in third place. So Yang Yang of China qualifying there. Isabel Charest looking very, very good and in control of her skating and dominating this one from the front. Ozawa figured in the early part of the race they're just putting a hand out and touching uh, Yang Yang, but in the end, I think the Japanese skater just ran out of steam. So Amy Peterson wearing number 47 leads, Ellen Vegas, 35, goes into the lead now. Shikaji Tanaka with 51 on her helmet and finally one of Korea right at the back seven and a half laps to go Helen Vegas looking relaxed and graceful at the front looked inside her and didn't spot Shikaji Tanaka come through on her and now lead Japan from the United States Amy Peterson eases away past and then won the Korean so in the space of about uh, 50 meters or so, it's all changed. And now Ellen Vegas of the Netherlands finds herself right at the back by a couple of meters. One lead from Amy Peterson of the United States. Then Tanaka. Then Vegas. Coming round with just over 300 meters to go now. One of Korea. The Koreans brilliant in the women's relay, which they just won from the Chinese, but both teams broke the world record earlier, earlier in the Olympic Winter Games. Let's watch the Japanese girl, see if she can make a move and make her way through the semi-final. She's just hanging her head a little bit as they go through the bell. Just over 50 meters left. It's Peterson in second place behind one of Korea. And so the host nation will only find one of their skaters make it through to the semi-final. But uh, the Koreans delighted with their skaters' performance. And I think Amy Peterson, well, she can be very, very pleased with her performance too. Now we'll take a short break to resurface the ice. Japan it was who led early on through Shikaji Tanaka.
But look at the speed now, here are the results of one for the high king of Korea. For the ladies, 1,000 meter quarterfinal. In first place, Hae Young Won of Korea. So two world records place, uh, have been USA. set here. Two skaters, rather, have broken world Thank records. You. Yang Yang A from China with the uh, brilliant new figures of 131.991 and Kim of Korea. It looks as though it could be an all-Asian showdown once we get to the final. There's the result of the final quarter-final, one of Korea and Amy Peterson of the United States. And a terrific performance there from Yang Yang A coming straight out in that first uh, quarter-final, Jamie, and uh, going straight out and breaking the world record. Yeah, a um, good positive start by uh, the Dutch girl, Landman. She went out, gave herself the best possibility of getting through and qualifying. Uh, unfortunately, she had a, a very strong Chinese girl and a very strong Korean sat at the back, and they just pounced at the end and uh, took the world record. What about the performance from Yang Yang? Um, very, very good. She blasted around the outside. Uh, when the pace was starting to, uh, to tail off a bit and uh, she just, just kept going and going. The early pace that Laman set, she was able to finish and uh, break the world record, which is a very, very fast time. Certainly was. So let's turn our attention now to the semi-finals of the men's 500 metres and Li Yao Yong of China had thrown down the gauntlet earlier. Here's what happened. Some very tense moments for the semi-finalists. The first semi-final of the men's 500 metres, Dave Stieg of Holland, who's looked very comfortable in the earlier rounds. Anu Long of China, Chai Zhai Hoon, the defending champion from Korea, and Hitoshi Oematsu from Japan. That's the Korean, Chai Zhai Hoon, whose, uh, I suppose, status as Korea's number one skater has rather been taken over by Kim Dog Sung who's already the 1,000 metre champion at the Olympic Games at just 17 years old. That was Dave Verstig of Holland. Looks much, much better at this distance where he unofficially holds the world record. That record is yet to be ratified by the governing body of this sport, but tremendous support for Korea, as of course there is for Japan. Shai Jai Hoon skates for Korea and doing Matsu for Japan. Skates digging in the ice for the sprint for the line. Vestique tries to go through on the inside, but can. Can't. It's Uematsu who gets away to a brilliant start. Japan followed by China. And David Stieg of Holland is right at the back. That start upsetting him. He's almost uh, into the sides. I think uh, the Dutch skater is well, well out of it. Shai Jai Hoon of Korea, the defending champion, has got some work to do. It's Japan with the Korean trying to come through on... And you long at the moment. The Korean does make it through into second place, but the Chinese coming back just pushes Jai Jai Hoon to the side. It's just two to go through to the final. There's arms and legs all over the place. I don't think the defending champion's going to get through. He doesn't. Uematsu, a brilliant skate. 43.69 seconds. And the defending champion who was pushing An Yu Long of China more than a lap away from the finish, ends up in third place. So perhaps Korea are not going to dominate this tournament as we th thought they might do. They've already won the 1,000 metres by the skater who goes in the next semi-final, Kim Dong Sung. They won the women's relay. But they may not win the 500 metres, not if Hitoshi Uematsu of Japan skates like that. David Stieg's problems on the inside started right from the start. Got into a bit of a mess there, and then he was never really in the hunt for one of the final places. The finish was superb. Chai Jai Hoon just le left himself a little bit too much to do and was just about a foot behind Anulong of China. Japan in first place. Hitoshi Uematsu confirmed at 43.69. The time is irrelevant. The Japanese skater has got a place in the final. And Anu Long of China, he will make the lineup for the final as well. Uematsu has just been announced to the crowd as the winner. Anu Long joins him in the final. Vestig of the Netherlands and the Korean are eliminated.
The second semi-final includes Mark Gannion of Canada, brilliant skater. Andy Gable of the USA, Kim Dung Sung of Korea, Baby. the 1,000 meter champion. Ishitani of Japan and Lai Jai Jun, silver medalist in the 1,000 meters. And how about this for a start? Japan in the lead straight away. Andy Gable has been gaining in confidence with every skate here. Well, this is an incredible start. The Japanese skater Nishitani just taking a look behind him to see what's going on. And Andy Gable is stuck to him like a leech. If Gable's got any chance of going through, oh, he's gone, the American's gone. The pressure was just a little too much to take. So at the moment, it's Japan from Mark Gagnon. And then Korea and China having a real tussle. 50 meters to go. Ganyan, I think, is going to qualify. Nishitani of Japan. Two Japanese go through. Canada. Oh, brilliant. Kim Dung Sung, the 1,000 meter champion, is eliminated. That's a big surprise. What is the time? It's 42.75. That is a new Olympic record and only just outside the world record. Well, by the time we get to the finals, with two Japanese, Japanese skaters safely through, this place is going to take off. Mark Gagnon safely through, but only after a big, big fight with the rest. He can certainly thank Takafumi Nishitani for helping with the early pace. I think Mark Gagnon liked that. Andy Gable in second place there just after the start was going very well indeed. Unfortunately, he fell with a couple of laps to go. Our next program, the ladies there was no contact. It was just the pace was a little bit too much and the blade just didn't dig into the ice enough. Andy Gable will not make his second final during these Olympic Games. Nishitani will, along with teammate Hitoshi Uematsu. So I wonder if the uh, Chinese are having a discussion about what went on in that race. I guess uh, they will all regroup before the final to discuss tactics. So a new Olympic Takafumi record Nishitani for Nishitani. And uh, uh, I've just been told that Lai of China has actually been disqualified. Place, it didn't make any difference because it was Mark Gagnon in second place who also beat the old Olympic record. But Lai just behind him, pondering what may have been. Amazing that Korea did not make it through in that semi-final. Nishitani and Gagnon skated brilliantly to go through to the final. Kim, who's already got a gold medal from these games, is gone as is Gable. And Lai from China was disqualified. Well, that's what short track racing is all about. Jamie, two very physical semi-finals. Yeah, I think um, what, what it shows is uh, how, how important the starts are in both races. Um, once one of the guys gets out in first place, it is very hard to, uh, to overtake him and, and qualify. So I think uh, in, in both races, the, the guy who got to the front won, mm. won both races. So. Mm. Not easy having five in that second heat, was it? <laughs> okay, well, we're returning now to the ladies' 1,000 metres. The Olympic record has been broken a number of times. Two skaters have broken the world record. Let's find out what will happen in the semi-finals. The skaters getting ready for the first semi-final of the 1,000 metres for women. Two Koreans, a Canadian and a Chinese skater getting away to a fairly steady start. And in the lead at the moment, number 21, Kim Young Mai from Korea with the Chinese skater just going around the outside. Yang Yang, Yang Yang S. And in third place, Isabel Charay, the Canadian. So the pace beginning to hot up a little bit. After a slow start, it's nine laps in total. They've got six and a half to go. It's Kim Yun Mai in the lead, her teammate, number 31, is moving into second place. I wonder if this can be a Korean 1-2. Not if Isabel Charay of Canada has anything to do about it. She's in third place at the moment. One leads for Korea for the first time in this first semi-final. 
They come round with four laps to go. One of Korea, look at that. One of the Koreans has gone way, way off. So Sheree in second place and one of Korea have now developed a gap of about 10 meters over Yang Yang of China. And this is going to look comfortable now for Isabel Sheree and Wan. Big surprise that Kim Yun Mai is not going to be there as well, but she made a big error with about four laps to go. They're going to come round and hear the bell this time. It's Wan of Korea. The Chinese skater is trying to make up ground. There's only a couple of meters between the first two and the Chinese now as they come into the home straight. The Chinese make it. I think Isabel Sheree has been eliminated on the line. The photo finish will determine that. Wan Hai Kyung of Korea makes it through to the 1,000 meter final. But who will be the second skater to join her? That was an incredible comeback by Yang Yang of China. She was dropped when there was a little bit of a tussle, about three or four laps out. Isabel Charest must have thought she was safe for that second qualifying spot. Now then, it was one in the lead at this stage. Isabel Charest came through on the inside, and then Yang Yang and Kim Yun Mai of Korea lost about five meters in the space of 20. Just watch the skater in third place at the moment. It's the skate that has to pass the line first, and I think she's going to get it. And that confirms what everybody felt. The worst fears of all those people in the stadium supporting Canada. Isabel Charest has been eliminated. One of Korea goes through, and Yang Yang of China qualify for the final. And in fourth lane, number 47, by the slimmest of margins the Canadian is eliminated so Korea have one skater through already as do the Chinese <laughs> just the front part of the front foot dug in the ice there to get some purchase away to the first bend but unlike the sprint in the men's 500 meters a little bit leisurely until that is Ikui Toshigawara of Japan decides to lift it it often happens in some of the longer races that if the pace is very slow and then the skaters try to put in a big burst they start to find problems certainly the pace is being lifted here coming up towards six laps to go Chun Li Kyung of Korea leads to Shigawara of Japan in second place. Then comes Yang Yang A a right around the outside. That was an increase in pace. Five laps to go. Amy Peterson of the USA now adrift in fourth place. It's Korea and China almost together with four laps to go. Then Japan, then the USA. The Japanese would desperately love a finalist in an individual event here. Toshigawara, a tiny little skater, just tucked in behind Chun of Korea. It's still China leading. Two laps to go, just over 200 meters. Tremendous roars for Toshigawara. Now, what can she do? Amy Peterson's coming through on the inside. Toshigawara's right in amongst it there, but loses her balance. Yang Yang A comes away for China. And Korea follows in second place. Two Chinese and two Koreans in the final. And Toshigawara is eliminated. Oh. The Chinese and the Koreans in head-to-head -head battle in the final of the women's 1,000 meters. Now we'll take a short break to resurface the ice. 134.6. Not a particularly fast time, but uh, that's largely as a result of the slow early pace. And Toshigawara there trying to squeeze through. She nearly did it. But uh, Chun Li Kyung just leaning on her a little bit, and that upset the Japanese skaters' rhythm. And Japan, quite naturally, are going to object to the referee. Sometimes. Skaters do get disqualified. There was no faller there, but there may be a question of Toshigawara being impeded around that turn. At the moment, 
the two qualifiers are being shown as Yang Yang A of China and Chun Li Kyung of Korea. But I guess the inquest will go on for some time yet. And confirmation of that result, 134.68, China and Korea through to the final again in the second semi-final. Yes, another two eventful uh, semi-finals there, Jamie. But looking at the first one there, Isabel Charest. I mean, strange tactics from, from Kim there. Yeah, um, big mistake, I think, from, uh, from Kim. She tried, basically, Isabel Charest came up the inside and was quite um, reasonably uh, in, in front of her going into the bend. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Korean tried to lean on her with, with the size difference. It was a rather strange, strange tactical manoeuvre. And uh, she paid for it in the end, and she's failed to qualify. A bit like Sheree, really, not mm. uh, skating all the way to the line. So uh, two of the favourites, in my opinion, have, have gone out through the stupid manoeuvres, really. No, it just goes to prove, you know, how difficult your sport is here. Because, you know, one, one slight mistake, the Olympic challenge is over. Yeah, it's a fine line um, whether to stand your ground or whether to just move wide and give yourself a chance later on in the race. And uh, Isabel Charest not skating over the line only has herself to blame, really. Two hundredths of a second of qualifying for a, um, an Olympic final, which uh, is crazy. Korea and China, though, I mean, dominant uh, here. Is it something to do with the build that makes them so good in this event? Uh, the Chinese have been very strong in, in, this, uh, in the ladies' event this year. Um, I would expect, uh, if, if everything goes right tactically, I'd expect uh, the Yang Yang uh, to, to win, who was in the second semi final. She, uh, she has a, a great turn of speed, and if she uses that in the right area, then I, I don't think any, any of the others can actually catch her and, and beat her, really. Well, Yang Yang A and Yang Yang S are in the final. Good luck, uh, Paul Dickinson, in the final, which you'll be able to see in Grandstand over on BBC One later on. But we're now returning to the men's sprint event, the 500 metres, and the start of the B final. The men's 500 meter B final gets underway. Andy Gable of the United States going straight into the lead. Four laps to go. And surprisingly, Gable leads ahead of the young Korean, Chai Jai Hoon, the defending champion, who will not go for a medal this time. This is the B final, remember, but Andy Gable in the lead. The Korean eases through on the inside as David Stieg of the Netherlands in third place. And the 1,000 meter champion Kim Dong Sung of Korea is in fourth and last place at the moment. Here goes the bell. Korea lead. The Netherlands in second. Andy Gable trying to get through on the inside. This could be a testing last bend, but the Korean's going to win it. Shai Jai Hoon of Korea wins. 42.83 seconds. It's very, very quick indeed. Just outside the world record, in fact. So some consolation for the defending champion winning the B final. And like we saw in the women's competition a couple of days ago, if there was a big fall or anything major happened in the A final, that could be good enough for a medal. Number 109, Mark Gagnon of Canada. A bronze medal in the 1,000 meters four years ago. And a man who finished fourth behind Great Britain's Nicky Gooch in Lillehammer. Nicky Gooch, unfortunately, fell in the preliminary rounds, but listen to the noise for Nishitani of Japan, Anu Long of China. There's two Japanese in this final. The other one, Hitoshi Uematsu. The first time Japan have been represented by two skaters in an Olympic final. Four and a half laps of this track. Ganyon and the inside. Nishitani and Yulong of China and Uematsu on the outside. There's going to be a mad, mad dash to the line after the start. The first corner so important. Ganyon tries to get through, but what a brilliant start by Nishitani. It's very, very quick already. Nishitani is skating brilliantly. Mark Ganyon in second place. And Yulong of China. And uh, Uematsu, and listen to the noise as Japan leads the way with two and a half laps to go. Oh, Ganyan's gone. Uematsu could be creating a bit of history here. Can it be Japan in first and second? I don't think it can. It's certainly 
Going to be gold, I think, for Japan. Yes, it is. Nishitari comes through. He's done it. The White Ring Stadium in Nagano has gone crazy for Takafumi Nishitani. Oh, joy for the host nation. Well, Nishitani has certainly given the fans something to cheer about. Jamie, we've run out of time. Thanks very much for joining us for the Olympics. Sport will continue over on BBC One with the start of Grandstand, but after 15 days in Nagano, we've had a lot to talk about. We'll leave you with some of the athletes who have been big in Japan. Go back into the lead, but Nikki Gooch comes through. Nikki Gooch showing all his experience there, not panicking. And skating round now, getting ready for the changeover is Matthew Rowe. A big push by Nicky Gooch. This is a much more positive performance than we had in the semi-finals. Matthew Rowe enjoying the experience. This big Olympic experience for him. Now it's Matt Jasper. Jasper chasing the Americans. Eric Flame for the United States. The only man in history to win medals in the Olympic Games for long track and short track skating. He hands over to Andy Gable. And the Japanese and the Americans just beginning to pull away from Great Britain at the moment. But this is a tremendous effort by Matt Jasper to get back on terms. Just coming round now with 13 laps to go. And for the first time, the United States on level terms with the Japanese. Great Britain in third place. This is where endurance really begins to tell. A tremendous push by Nicky Gooch on the back of Matthew Rowe. Matthew Rowe mustn't panic. He's got to stay cool here. In third place, just tiring a little bit. The United States extending their lead over the Japanese. Ten laps to go now. Just over a thousand meters. Japan's... Sinohara in second place. But the USA are away in the lead by a whisker. Great Britain at the moment are about 15 or 20 metres back. It's Matt Jasper who's trying to make up the ground. He'll be passing over to Nicky Gooch, our Olympic bronze medalist from four years ago. But I get the feeling now it's going to be a tussle between the USA who almost stumbled there and Japan. Six laps to go now for Japan and the United States in the relay. Tremendous skating from Tamura. He's ahead at the moment of Kieran Hansen of the USA. Great Britain out of shot are safe in third place. But they're some 25 metres back from these two. This is unbelievable skating at the front by the Japanese and the Americans. The endurance factor has really bitten hard into the skaters for Great Britain at the moment. David Allardyce, Nicky Gooch, Matt Jasper and Matthew Rowe. They led earlier on, but now it's very definitely a two-way fight between Japan in the lead and the United States. Australia being lapped, and look at this. The Japanese take the bell. It's going to be another bit of glory for Satoru Tarao of Japan. The United States will finish in second. And any minute now, Great Britain will come across the line. Nicky Gooch, absolutely exhausted, gets a tap on the back from Matthew Rowe. But it was a very powerful performance from the Japanese and the United States. So not the happy ending we were hoping for Britain, Jamie. They just seemed a bit flat, but maybe... You know, the fact yeah. that they didn't qualify for the final, that's understandable. Yeah, it would have been nice if we went out on a, on a high note when, in winning the B final. Um, interesting tactics with uh, them going, they went out positively, uh, but they just ran out of gas at the end, I think, and started to struggle with 12 laps to go with the pace. So, unfortunately, we came third. We did come third. Well, we will have the final of the relay a little bit later, but now to the women's 1,000 metres, where there are two skaters from China and two from Korea. It featured Yang Yang S and Yang Yang A. So good luck, Paul Dickinson. So 
a fairly steady start. I don't think anybody wants to take the lead. And I suppose you could be forgiven for thinking there might be a team tap to tactics at stake here. Very important individual goals as well, though, with gold, silver, and bronze at stake in about seven and a half laps time. But it's a very steady skate at the moment by number 15, Yang Yang S, the silver medalist in the 500. Annie Perot of Canada won that 500 meter race, but she was eliminated in the 1000 quarterfinals. Now the pace begins to increase just a little bit. Yang Yang S in the lead ahead of Wan Hai Kyung of Korea. Then Wang Wa Yang Yang A. Chun Li Kyung, the defending champion, just at the back at the moment. This is really intriguing to see what happens over the next five laps. There's a lot of pride at stake here, especially for the Chinese, who were just defeated by uh, about a tenth of a second after 3,000 meters of relay racing. But it's China 1 and 2 at the moment. Yang Yang S is in the lead, ahead of her teammate. In third place is Wan Hai Kyung, and the defending champion is still at the back. Two laps to go. 200 meters left. And Yang Yang A just went a little wide, but she goes into the lead of the bell. The Koreans are beginning to go through. Yang Yang A it is who's heading for home. Chun Li Kyung, the defending champion, is chasing her. Chun Li, oh my goodness. Now then, I think the defending champion retains her title. And I also think that Yang Yang tried to just push her to one side. Well, there is certainly some debate going on down on the referee's bench in front of us. Yang Yang A must have thought she'd won it. But look at that. A desperate reach for the line by Chun Li Kyung to defend her title successfully. Another eventful race and a close finish, but the gold went to Korea. Well, we're now going to return to the men's 5,000 metres relay, and it featured the defending champions Italy and the world champions Korea. We can join it for the closing stages. Canada leading the men's relay final with 11 laps to go. China fighting it out with Korea for second place. The defending champions, Italy, their challenge has gone and there's a fall. Oh my goodness, absolute carnage on the ice. Canada are miles ahead. Korea and China were tangling. At the moment, it looks as though as Francois Drolet moves across there and glances across the ice, Italy are out of it altogether, but Canada just watching from the other side of the ice to see what happened. The Koreans are back on their feet and fighting to get back in touch with Canada. It seems a forlorn hope at this stage. Italy are way, way out of it. There's going to be a new champion. The Koreans look exhausted after that fall. Fabio Carter on the ice there, but all they can hope to do is perhaps catch up one place. Canada leading from Korea. The Canadians have got about 15 meters on the Canadian, on the Korean at the moment. Three and a half laps to go. This would be an incredible victory by Canada if they can hang on. Had it not been for that clash between the Koreans and the Chinese, we could have had a very close finish. As it happens, I think it could well be a runaway victory unless the Koreans can produce something special. Mark Gagnon, who's been very disappointing in the individual events, hits the bell. If he can stay on his feet, he's going to get the gold medal he wanted. Canada are going to win it. The time is not as fast as the B final, which was a new Olympic record, but that does not matter a jot to Eric Bedard, Derek Campbell, Francois Drolet, and Marc Gagnon. So a tactical race, the goal goes to Canada. Jamie, thank you for joining us uh, throughout the Olympics, but we've got more coverage from Nagano coming up later, the men's slalom and the bobsleigh. But now it's back to Steve. This sport is billed as Formula One on ice. And there were plenty of thrills and spills at last weekend's Usuran British Speed Skating Championships at Guildford. 
In pole position for the men's championships, Nikki Gooch, an Olympic bronze medalist in Lillehammer, but now getting over a disappointing Nagano. Last year was a bit of a disaster. Um, I had a lot of illness and uh, just really didn't perform last year. But I uh, had a long break in the summer, been training well. And uh, yeah, I've skated a, a British record for the 500 metres and uh, for the 3,000 metres. So at both ends of the scale, it's going very well. Reigning women's champion Debbie Palmer has dominated these championships for eight years and is looking for even more success. I'm hoping that this is going to be a stepping stone to next year and next year that would really mean something to me. The nature of the sport, anything can happen, so to be that consistent over a decade, it would be nice if it does happen. Leon Flack had a